This is a video about why sugar is probably the reason you're a couple more pounds than you'd like to be. Some doctors even believe it could be the reason for the obesity epidemic and modern day chronic diseases. But don't worry, after watching this video, you'll understand how this can happen to your body. And most importantly, you'll learn how you can still enjoy your favorite treats while avoiding many of the negative side effects that come with sugar. One of the biggest problems that comes with this is weight gain. From my research and what I've learned from Dr. Lane Norton, an evidence-based fitness and nutrition expert with a PhD in nutritional sciences, we have numerous meta-analyses showing that sugar isn't to blame. They show that when calories are controlled between two groups, the ones consuming sugar do not gain more weight. But why is that the case? Because as the first law of thermodynamics teaches us, matter cannot be created nor destroyed, which proves the statement calories in equals calories out. But it's complicated because not all sugar is created equal. Because on one end, there's interesting research showing that those that eat more fruit tend to have lower amounts of adipose tissue. And on the other end, people that eat a lot of sugar tend to get in high amounts from ultra processed, hyper palatable foods that lead to overconsumption of calories. At the end of the day, if your calories consumed is greater than your calories burned for a long period of time, you will gain weight. Therefore, the answer is simple. It's just to eat less. But you probably already knew that because it's a lot easier said than done. There's certain components of sugar that make it really difficult to stop eating it. The moment sugar dissolves on your tongue, it's like a sweet symphony playing in your brain and body. Neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman tells us this is far from accidental. He explains that evolution wired us with two sugar-seeking pathways that were independent of one another. They weren't designed for indulgence, but for survival. The first pathway kicks in when we taste the sweetness of sugar. The brain changes our perception of all foods, making them appear even more attractive. This happens via the release of dopamine, a molecule that leads us to seek out pleasure. This response puts us in a very vulnerable spot. It makes us crave another dopamine hit from sugar, but every subsequent hit won't be as strong. Plus, the higher the blood sugar spike, the stronger the craving. However, as we mentioned, there's a second path, which is triggered from neurons called neuropod cells in your small intestine. They signal to us via the gut-brain highway called the vagus nerve to continue seeking out more food to increase blood glucose. This can easily become really problematic if you're trying to lose or maintain a healthy weight. But to understand that, we really need to explore what happens to your body when you eat sugar. Let's really simplify it down. There are two types, refined sugar that is manufactured and added to the foods that we eat, and naturally occurring sugars that come from whole foods like fruit. Depending on the type, they can lead to sustained energy or they can lead to crashes in cravings. It's important to know that carbohydrates, for example, from starchy foods, are also broken down into glucose to be utilized by the body. But to keep this video simple, we're just gonna be focusing on sweet foods. When we say sugar, we oftentimes mean sucrose. Although to be metabolized, it needs to be broken down into glucose and fructose. Both these sugars then enter the bloodstream where glucose provides immediate energy for the body and fructose heads to the liver for processing. This spike of sugar increases blood sugar levels, which if go too high, can be toxic for the brain. So the pancreas releases insulin, a hormone that tells the body to store excess sugar as glycogen in the liver and muscles, and as fat in fat cells for later use. As these become full, they release a hormone called leptin, signaling to the body that you've had enough to eat. Unfortunately, large quantities of fructose, oftentimes found in soda and fruit juices, disrupt with this hormonal signal, leading to our body not being able to signal that we're full, resulting in overeating, caloric surplus, and weight gain. However, natural sugars are different. They contain less fructose, around 10%, compared to 55% that's in refined sugars. They also contain fiber, which slows down the absorption of sugar. Dr. Robert Lustig, a pediatric endocrinologist and avid sugar industry critic, has been incredibly vocal about how he believes fructose is toxic. All this soda, fruit juice, and added sugar becomes too much for the liver to process. And he believes if this goes on for too long, it can lead to fatty liver disease, which could be paired with insulin resistance, leading to a whole suite of chronic diseases. He also talks about how modern medicine has been flawed for ages now, 
and it's solely treating symptoms instead of focusing on getting to the root cause. And he believes this is the source of it all. But at the moment, it's a quite controversial topic, so use your own judgment here. But his solution is really just cutting down on your sugar consumption and opting for sugar from more whole food sources like fruit. What he's found out is it's not per se sugar, but it's more so the excessive amounts that we're all consuming because it's literally in 80% of the products that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Now for the most important part, I'm gonna give you a whole toolkit of a bunch of different things that you can try to help beat your sugar cravings, to help you have more consistent energy throughout the day, and also not get metabolic syndrome. And these things can predominantly come from blood sugar spikes that you get from your food. By literally just eating more protein and fiber, you are going to be more satiated. If you really just try to focus on eating meals that have our proteins, our fats, and our carbs, you're not gonna really be craving a sugar hit. You're gonna be full. Plus, as you learned, the fiber is gonna help your body slowly absorb that sugar, so you're not gonna have a massive burst of energy and then crash right after. You're instead gonna have more consistent energy. Huberman also explains that supplementing with glutamine and omega-3 can help actually reduce sugar cravings via the second pathway that we talked about before, neurons in the small intestine. There isn't any clinical studies on this, so it's purely anecdotal data. What's really cool is you can use this CGM from Levels Health to actually do a bunch of experiments on yourself and figure out how your body is responding to different meals. You take a picture of your meal and then two hours later, it'll give you a score. It was really cool because I was able to figure out and try a bunch of these things out and see what works for me, what didn't work for me. And that really gave me the knowledge to understand how to build out my meals to support my metabolic health. If you'd like to try it out, there's gonna be a link in the description and you can use that link to skip the wait list that currently exists. And not to mention, they're also gonna be offering you two free months when you sign up for the annual plan. So the rest of the tools are gonna to be focused on reducing your blood sugar spikes. The order in which you eat your food is incredibly important. So opting for vegetables first, then eating your proteins, then eating your carbs. Even just doing the vegetables first. Next, Andrew Huberman recommends having some lemon or lime before during or after your meal to help offset your blood sugar response. Plus, I've heard the same thing about vinegar, but I've heard a bunch of mixed responses, so you're gonna have to just try it out for yourself. You can also use cinnamon, but I wanna caution you guys not to go over one teaspoon per day because it can be toxic for the body. Finally, the most potent, and this stuff can be dangerous. It's called berberine. I've tried it out for a bunch, but this stuff is literally on par with a lot of pharmaceutical drugs out there. I've personally stopped using it, and it can be really problematic because it can literally drop your blood sugar lower than it's actually supposed to be. At the end of the day, all these tools are useful to help offset the negative effects of sugar, but doing the basics is always gonna be the most important. Having more adipose tissue, fat, is likely going to be the cause for health problems. But how do we do that? How do we lose fat? Again, it's another instance where it's easy to say, but much harder to execute on. It's as simple as being in a caloric deficit, meaning day to day, you burn more than you eat. Unfortunately though, oftentimes we underestimate how much we actually eat, and then we overestimate how much we actually burned walking or at the gym. But here's the thing, it's nearly impossible to know how much you're consuming just by looking at the food. In my opinion, if fat loss is your goal, I would strongly urge you to start tracking your calories. You can do that by using a simple kitchen scale to weigh out your food, and then tracking that in an app called Chronometer. You can then use this calculator from Precision Nutrition to figure out how many calories you should be consuming each day to hit your goals. And here's gonna be some realistic rates that you can expect to see, which for men is gonna be one to two pounds, and for women is gonna be 0.8 to 1.65 pounds per week. Now paired with the scale, where you're comparing week to week average changes and measuring consistently on the same device at the same time under the same circumstances should help a lot. Personally, I do it first thing in the morning after I empty my bowels. <laughs> I'll have more details all about this in this video's newsletter. So if you'd like to sign up, there's a link in the description to do so, so you can learn all about it and also more tools to help you achieve your health goals. If you're feeling really overwhelmed by all of this, I really encourage you just to start reading the food labels and trying your best to start reducing added sugar in the foods that you eat. Even on top of that, starting to get your sugar from more whole foods like fruits. Doing all this should really help you cut out a few calories and should hopefully help you lose weight. But that's not the whole picture, because if you're not getting enough sleep, you could be shooting yourself in the foot. But in this video here, we talk to sleep experts to build up a toolkit so you can start optimizing your sleep. 
Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Boom.